Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to the Tangent Cast. Hopefully we won't massively overrun this week. Although a lot of people were saying that we should make it that length more often. That's so, what she said? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, incidentally, if it's a bit noisier than normal, two reasons. One, windows need to be open or we're going to die. And two, um, I'm also testing a new, well benchmark test riggy thing that I got sent. Yeah, we've got some bits to review and it's just doing its It's thing. whirring away, I tell you. It's whirring. It's doing the whirring thing. Yeah. In fact, I might start doing some updates or something to it in the background. So if if you see me distracted and Amy has to poke me a couple of times, you know why. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'll just be like, bodge. And I'll be like, no. <laughs> so, how have you been the last week? You know that thing where you're like going backwards and forwards Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, like you know in a state of confusion and days <laughs> like trying to do everything at once yes that's been me I've got to call it I'm going to call the ordeal if you will Project Scorpio video oh yes which just went up yesterday it did I swear that's probably I'm pretty sure it's the longest you've ever spent on a video it's one of them there are a couple of others that I've got equal for example the Xbox One original SDK analysis yeah but in terms of a single video with the amount of time I put into it, probably up there because of the sheer amount of research that I had to do. I mean, I was... Well, not only that, it took you a long time to edit as well. Yeah, it was all the, you know, the yeah. graphs and the animations and the calculations and calculating what the difference in performance levels were. It took a while. So, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to say that. <laughs> Oh, so very, very busy with the Scorpio then. Yeah, plus as well everything else, just generally. Cool. What about you? I'm good, I'm good. Um, I'm a bit achy. I was at London Pride yesterday for like, just stuff and things, Take, taking photos and stuff. It was, it was fun, but it was also like, I wake up this morning and I'm like, ow, everything hurts because I've just been standing all day. So yeah, that was it was good. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm fine. You know, normal stuff. Busy. Yeah, I'm a bit achy, but that's from gym more than anything. Yeah. <laughs> Aside from that, what have you been playing? As if I couldn't tell well, you. Well, actually, right. I've been playing something other than Overwatch. I've been playing Overwatch, but I don't think we need to talk about that anymore. No, please don't. <laughs> I'm so bored of Overwatch. I'll probably just like shoot myself. I'll like well, I'll fly I'll, to America, buy a gun, and then just like well, shoot I, myself. I, I have been playing it, but I've talked about that a lot, so that's not. But what I have been playing a little bit of is something I bought on the first day of the Steam sale. I haven't played it terribly much because obviously I've been very busy, but I managed to squeeze in a little time. The 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 waiting is killing us. Tell us. The darkest dungeon. And good, bad, ugly. Very good. Give me a happiness level of one to ten. Well, given that the game is about crushing eldritch despair, that's not really an appropriate thing to say. I'm. Um, there's happiness involved with the darkest dungeon. <laughs> like, I did a run, because like, this is a game with permadeath where your heroes can die, so you can get new ones and stuff. It's not like right. game, The game doesn't restart if you lose your heroes, you, you've got more. But I lost all but one. So yeah, I, I lost all but one, and it was just going really poorly, and I was just like, escape, eject, 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 because you like go into dungeons to get like loot and... like level up your heroes and all sorts of other things and it was just going really poorly I'm, do I, I might just restart because <laughs> it's going so badly like all I my... think a game like that though you're not actually supposed to do well on the first couple of attempts probably not but it's like you, you've got all these dungeons and they you know, they get more and more difficult as you go on you know you're supposed to level up your heroes and then you've got like the darkest dungeon which is like the, the final goal basically right so you are, the heroes are supposed to die. The game just warn you right when you start. Your heroes are gonna die, but I just feel like I've gotten off such a such a bad start. Like I've lost so many already. I just feel like it, it can't be supposed to be like this bad, surely. Maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> I've played so little. It's hard to say. But no, it's it's, it's really good. And the, and the guy who does like the voiceover for it is really amazing. That's kind of cool. Like, say, for example, like, your heroes get more and more stressed out as like they encounter more monsters and stuff. I can't think what. And um. It'll say things like, oh... Uh, New construction options. Because, like, there'll be moments where like, your hero is... Your, their resolve is tested, right? <laughs> Why is that funny? Yeah, nothing, I just find that... Like, my morale is low. I just find yeah, yeah, so, like, you know, these moments can bring either, you know, like, heroism 
or despair. And then, like, usually something bad. Like, oh, like Brexit. Then. They'll be like, like paranoia or something. It's like really Brexit, good. then. Yeah, let's not get into that. No politics, please. Let's not get into that. So, let's move on to the topic, shall we? Well, I haven't even said what I've been playing. Oh, sorry. Fuck you, then. Sorry, sorry. continue. Oh, well, I, I get to speak? Yeah, yes, tell, tell me what you've been playing. I just assumed you haven't been playing anything. She said you were really busy. That doesn't mean I can't stamp on people's faces in video games occasionally. It's true. So I, what have you been playing? I've been playing a couple of things. Mm -hmm. I played the original Doom. Oh, yeah. A little more. Mm -hmm. And I've been playing Doom. Re well, the rebirth. The re reincarnation. Yeah. And I've just gotten through hell. And I think that's me not really giving a spoiler that's me saying like saying you get a gun i was gonna say that there being held in a doom game is not really indicative of anything no it's like me saying to you well you, you see that the, demon the, the, over the, there there's guns and you run fast um what else well <laughs> demons aren't your friend yeah 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 there's that there's that um, yeah so i'm really enjoying it um, yeah it's a very good game i need to get back to playing doom yeah i think i i think um there it does have a couple of annoying moments in it but I think overall it's been a pretty solid experience. What annoying moments would you say? I think there are a couple of things that frustrated me. Like I can't remember their names are, but uh, it's gonna bug me. But you know the the uh, heads, the flaming skulls. Yeah. It really pissed me off a couple of times when I was trying to jump over chasms and they were like there, and I got caught once or twice. Yeah, that happened to me a few times, but obviously you just have to kind of shoot them before you can try and make the jump. Yeah, but I actually thought I'd got them all, but one uh, had been kind of lurking around the corner, and I was literally just jumping, and, and it was like bang in mid air. I was like, anger levels were freaking rising. Yeah, but that's from, happened to me a few times. Apart from that, though, I think it's a really good game. It is very, very good. Which, I think know. there might be a bit too much jumping though involved. Uh, yeah, I will say the you one, know the jumping puzzles are a bit much. But you know, just I don't want to give a spoiler, but you know the part where you're chasing that person. Yeah. And you've got to go up those that massive yeah and i was like oh that. and there was, uh, I, I was actually stuck on that for a while because i couldn't figure out where i was supposed to go I, I i figured it out but i have to admit i was like okay the jumping can stop now yeah that there is a bit too much of that but uh, that's a very minor complaint yeah overall it's a it, really solid it's a game fantastic yeah. game you should really check it out is. on the steam sale if yeah it's actually uh 40 off i think which is 30 or 40 percent considering the game's not been out very long it's actually a pretty nice reduction i think that's what i paid for on green man gaming though if memory serves because um, they were doing a really I, good deal on I, it. I yeah, don't I, think it's still I going i paid around. 31 pounds i think for doing yeah so it might be a little cheaper than I green think it's man 29 now on steam yeah so you're saving like a couple of bucks yeah so well, it's better than the full price. Well, precisely. So if you, you know, if you're unsure about Doom, definitely check it out if you're into your old school FPS because it is that in all its glory, basically. Precisely, young bean. So, topics. Uh, well, we've got a whole bunch of them. Yes, thankfully not as many as last week when we had like all the things from E3, but uh, still quite a bit to talk about. Yeah. So. So I guess shall we start with the NX? Sure, did you want to start? Because I'm trying to click buttons at the moment in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being well, unprofessional. Basically, there's been a couple of rumours about the NX since we last spoke. Now, because Nintendo refused to tell us what this console is, the rumours are getting out of hand, to be honest. Every week there's a new rumour and some of them are really weird. But basically, there's a couple of things. The first of which was some comments... You know one of the strangest rumours I've heard? No. It won't be a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's a really odd one but savage oh. to anyway. be honest i i think it, i think honestly the nx is either going to be like an amazing system or it's going to be like really well yeah we'll only have to see um but the, the first thing was that we had some comments from the gamestop ceo whose name completely escapes me um, that it's going to have physical media because there was rumours previously that it was going to be a digital download only console, which I refuted from the start because the internet is not there yet. It's no. not there yet. Um, and now there's a further rumour basically backing up the rumour we had a while ago that it's going to have cartridges instead of discs, which as weird as it sounds would actually kind of make sense. I'm actually not against that. The, I, mean, I mean, I, I was like, lol, really, at the start, but when I thought about it, I was like, actually... If it's like an SD card type style arrangement like the 3DS, that's on To fine. be honest, in a theoretical world, the NX cartridges could be bigger than Blu-rays. because yeah, and uh, less loading times than sodding Blu-ray. Well, yeah, I mean, this is really off topic. And you know I don't normally do that. But 
back in the days of the N64, there were a couple of games, and I don't remember which one of them specifically, but basically what the developers did is they used the N64's memory, uh, sorry, the N64's game cartridge is almost like RAM, so they were streaming in so much stuff so fast because the N64 lacked certain work RAM, especially in the video card. So it theoretically means that you're going to be able to stream a lot more and the N64's memory is going to be maybe under less pressure, but obviously it depends on the rest of the system. Because one of the things that Nintendo have said, Reggie has said, <coughs> is that they're not going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Scorpio and the Neo in terms of performance. Yeah, but which I think it's fine, but they, in my opinion they have to match the PS4 or see, the Xbox One. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's like, for example... I could say to you, well, I'm not building a car that goes as fast as a Ferrari F1. But that, yeah, that, that doesn't mean it's going to be like a three-wheeled dump yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Means it just means... Top, yeah, top it could hands. just be a standard... Yeah. Like, it could be, for example, more powerful than the PS4. Because they're not saying that they're not competing... With the pre with the original no, generation, they said that. so it depends on how you want to take it. Like yeah. you can either take it as like this is going to be mo not much more powerful than the Wii U, or you could take it as it's going to be a well, bit more I, powerful than I, the PS4. I, I think, you know, I think that after the disaster that was the Wii U, I don't think Nintendo can afford to not at least be as powerful as the current generation. If they make the mistake again, I just that's them. That's them done. I'm pretty convinced. So well, financially, they've got enough money for fail for about 15, 20 yeah, years. Yeah, I know, but I just feel like they can't have another disaster like the Wii U because that means like they should probably, if that happens again, they should probably just not make consoles anymore. Well, I think that's to be honest. They'll be fine as a company. They're not going anywhere, but I don't think like they can take another loss like that in terms of consoles. Well, I think their reputation. Will... That's what I mean. That's yeah. what I mean. Like financially, whatever. they're fine. But their reputation as a console manufacturer is already pretty low after the Wii U. Yeah, well, it's because they're fucking over themselves a lot regularly. Yeah, and well, not only that, their reputation just like with people in general is not good because of the YouTube policies and everything else. Yeah. So they kind of have to say, look, you know, we've learned. Here's here's what we've learned. Here's why the NX is better. That kind of thing. So. I don't know. The cartridges could be fine. They're also going to be not just as like the three DS um, SD card. It's also going to be bigger because the games are bigger. Well, but, yeah, a lot bigger theoretically. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw like eight gigabytes as like not even trying kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So cartridges could happen. I think to be honest, if as long as it matches like the PS4, the NX will be fine um, because that's what most people are going to be developing for in theory. So I yeah. mean. We'll Technically, it doesn't even have to be x86 based. It could be ARM, and then they could just run a compiler. But it depends. Well, I think the smart thing to do would be to use a similar architecture to PS4 and Xbox. So it'll be ARM then. One. So because obviously then Nintendo, obviously, smart. you know, they can port and stuff. Yeah, so obviously it'll be ARM because <laughs> Nintendo and Smart are not really friends. Yeah, we'll see. But I don't know. The only reason I'm thinking, as I said multiple times, the Wii U lost out because it was really annoying to port to. Yeah, but that's mostly because it was about as powerful as one of <coughs> Oh, excuse me, sorry. Is the hay fever giving you the tick sores? I don't really get hay fever. Just a random sneeze or... Okay, I'm sure the pollen was again. Eee, I'm, I'm up your sinus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't usually get hay fever as I said, so... Yeah. Anyway, um, there's been quite a lot of stuff about the RX 480 as well, so why don't you... Unless there's anything else you want to say about the NX? Because I kind of interrupted you there, so... Yeah, I mean, personally... I'm I'm hoping for the best for Nintendo. Mm -hmm. I, I personally, my my motto is hope for the best. Expect the worst. No, prepare for the worst. I'm not expecting because there's not enough information for us to expect anything. True, true. I, I I'm just going in with the. I I honestly think that the NX is going to be either, like with the Xbox One or the PS4. It could have been the best thing ever, it could have been the worst thing ever, or it could have been in between. Whereas with the NX, I don't think it's going to be in between. I think it's either going to be an amazing system, or it's going to be crap. Yeah. I mean, as far as we understand, it's out early next year, right? Uh, Yeah, basically. Which isn't so, too long away, really. Not really, but so my, my, my question really is about the NX, is when are they going to reveal it? My guess is either TGS or Gamescom. When is TGS again? Remind me, I'm not sure. 
can't remember to be honest. Fair enough. Someone will tell us, I'm sure. One second. But Sorry, regard what? regardless of that, um, yeah, TGS or Gamescom, I reckon, because, well, they have to reveal it soon, because the rumours are getting out of hand. I think, I, think I think it's coming up, like, August, September, if memory serves, but I'm so... They haven't, they haven't said when they're revealing it, they just said... No, I meant, I think, TGS. I'm oh, sure. Gamescom is in August, I'm not sure when TGS is. I think it's, like, a month afterwards, or two months afterwards. September sounds right, but I'm not sure. You know, there's so many bloody different yeah, events, it's, yeah, it's so hard, hard to keep, keep track. track of, yeah, yeah. So, fingers crossed for the NX. I want it to succeed because, you know, that's better for everybody if there's another competitor. It is. So, so the 480. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of conflicting reports on a lot of stuff with the 480. Essentially, some people are saying you can overclock it up to the wazoo. Other people are saying it doesn't overclock much more than 1400 megahertz. My personal opinion on that is it's probably going to depend a lot on Silicon Lottery. Are you tired there? Mm -hmm. And also based upon you know the ambient temperatures and a whole bunch of other stuff. We basically we don't have a large enough sample size, but from what I'm hearing about the performance, it's going to be roughly on par with the 980. So, unfortunately, there's a couple of issues as of the time I'm recording this. Issue A: we don't know everyone's driver revisions, and from what the reports are, AMD haven't given the final driver, the release driver, yet to people. Right. So, for example, we could see a 3% increase in performance, or we could see a 20% increase in performance. We just don't know right. on the final thing. And B, because everyone's testing it, but some people, one person was testing it with an i3. So it's like, how's that going to matter if someone's playing with an i5, an i7? It, there's so many different configuration issues that we just don't we don't really know. But the biggest thing I'm noticing is if it overclocks fairly okay, let's say from 1350 megahertz, you're potentially looking at 980 Ti level of performance, which is not going to be that far behind the 1070. Well, yeah, and given that the thing is basically free with how cheap it is in comparison to the 1080 or whatever. Yeah, I mean, how I look at it is let's say it's 10% or 20% slower than the 1070. But it's costing you 200, 200 to 230 US dollars. That's insane. That's really good value for money. Yeah. And I think for folks who have got a really good GPU at the moment, like uh, let's say you've got an R9 390X or you've got a 1070 or something like that, it's potentially not worth you upgrading right this second no. unless you can do a really good cheap deal on eBay, like get get a good deal on I, eBay for your I don't, old I don't card. I think it's for people who've already got like a 980 tie to be honest. I think no, it's just for people no, I'm saying 970 or yeah, below. Yeah. I'm just saying like, I think this card is more aimed at people who've got a GPU that's you know, getting a bit long on the tooth and they just haven't had the money to upgrade because all of the recent... Or getting into PC gaming. Yeah, or just getting into PC gaming because like all the, all the really good graphics cards are a hard sell for a lot of people when they're because like $500. I'd like to actually put out a video on this over the next couple of uh, weeks, but I was because I actually want to see what the performance is like before I recommend anything. And I was doing some quick eBaying. I didn't buy anything. I was just looking at like the prices, and it's not actually that difficult to build a system using the RX four hundred and eighty that's about as powerful as the Scorpio, but only is going to cost about four hundred to four hundred and fifty. Yeah. Um, and that's right now. That's assuming we you've don't got. Know how much the Scorpio costs yet? Do we? No, we don't. But I'm right. assuming you've got nothing. So you literally have no components. Yeah. So you've got yeah. no SSD. You've got no case. You've got no power supply. Yeah. Some of the components would be second hand, but still, you could buy a really cheap, ridiculously powerful system. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, if you just want to get into PC gaming cheaply, I don't think second hand is really a big deal. I mean, no. I mean, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure like all of my systems have been second hand to some degree. I don't think I've ever had, ever had a fully new PC, to be honest. Well, I mean, CPUs generally will work for a long ass time. Yeah, yeah, so... The thing that usually it's, goes it's is like RAM. It's a really nice option, to be honest. RAM and hard drives are usually the thing that goes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, a friend of mine was actually asking, like, when is they're moving house soon? They're saying once they move, they want to start getting into PC gaming because, you know, they... they They've they've seen the lights of the PC gaming master race. Oh, is that Lorna? Yeah, and I think to be honest, when I actually get round to doing that for her, I am going to recommend that she get a four eighty because or a four seventy. Yeah, or a four seventy because a four seventy is about one hundred and fifty. For the power you get, it's insane. It is, 
I mean, there is a possibility that Nvidia could cut the prices further of the 970s and the 980s, but I guess we'll just have to see. Yeah, but the 480 doesn't require too much power, right? What you mean in terms of PSU? Yeah. Um, if memory serves, it's about 120 fully loaded, but if you overclock, it goes to about 150 watts. Yeah, so you shouldn't need like. It's a single six pin power connector. Mm, there you go then. So what else have we got on the table to discuss today? She, she asks, which is basically saying nudge, 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 <laughs> bring up the bring up that note, nudge, nudge, nudge. Okay, let's talk about Valve. Shall okay, we? I can I, I can pretty much summarize Valve. Where's Half Life Three? Let's move on. No. 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 Okay. So basically, they're being sued in a lawsuit that is seeking to be a class action lawsuit. Okay. So this could be really messy for Valve. Is it the Half Life thing? No. Okay. No. Basically, now, I have never played Counter Strike in my life, so this is all from what I've read and researched. But basically, someone is suing them over the skins in Half uh, Half Life Counter Strike. But basically, what you can do is obviously you, you you can buy skins and in loot crates and stuff in the game, right? In Counter Strike. Right. But then what you can do is bet those skins in esport on esports matches, right? And those skins can then be traded in for real money. So basically it works in the same way as a casino chip. So basically this person is arguing that Valve is allowing illegal gambling to go on because this you can basically use a skin as a casino chip and right. get real money. And because these websites can be used by a minor, you've also got underage gambling as well as illegal gambling going on right. through Counter-Strike. Now, the only real defence that I can see, and obviously I'm not a lawyer or anything, that Valve has, is that this gambling goes through third party websites, however, you can link these websites to your official Steam account, and surely if Valve didn't want this thing going on, they wouldn't allow you to do that. So, while I'm not an expert in US law by any means, it seems Valve's pretty fucked actually. If this, if this goes to court, I can see them having to pay pretty heftily. Mm. From what I've read, obviously it's, it's a lawsuit. It's going to go on for a long time, especially if it goes class action. I was going to uh, say, it doesn't look good for Valve. Class gonna... action cow. It doesn't look good for Valve at all. I'm not going to lie. From what I've read, that's kind of funny though. Yeah, because like if you can link these sites to your Steam account, then Valve is not putting a stop to it in it by any way, in any means. No, not really. They're not. So. Could get messy. <laughs> could get real messy. It could. Because illegal gambling and underage illegal gambling as well. So it's just like, oh dear. <laughs> I have to admit, I've not actually messed around with Counter Strike for so, so, so long. It's, no, I've, I've never played Counter Strike in my life. I used to play it back just around the time when Source was released, CS Source. Well, so you I'm did so the beta of CSGO, right? Yeah, but that was videos back in the day. Yeah, but that I, I basically didn't play it then. You know, mm -hmm. I was only kind of just even then I'd gotten out for it uh, out of it for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard to predict where a lawsuit's going to go, especially when Valve obviously have a lot of money for very expensive lawyers. But clearly, this guy believes he can win a way he wouldn't challenge them. Buy stuff at the Steam sale that help the pay for the defense fund. <laughs> Uh, so I guess we should also talk about Mass Effect Andromeda as well unless there's something else on the list you want to talk about um, well we can talk about Mighty Number no. 9 first if you prefer up to you you choose let's just go down the list because I wrote it in this order because of an arbitrary reasoning so let's yeah. just go down the line. so Mass Effect then yes right so I don't know if you heard but basically Mass Effect Andromeda is going to completely ignore your ending choice for Mass Effect 3 essentially making Mass Effect 3 completely worthless you know I kind of am okay with that well I to be honest, I think it's perfectly reasonable because they're trying to start a new galaxy here that's what new, I'm saying new races new I characters didn't, you know I never actually everything. expected for them to continue yeah, because that's, that's it not would a reasonable be, expectation no, there'd be so way many, too much work there's so many choices to take into consideration here that, that the insane amount of work that would go into no, just that. No, if they that said Andromeda 2 doesn't take into account your your choice of Andromeda 1, that's different. Yeah, but this is essentially a fresh start. Exactly. It seems like, you know, this seems like an, an actually reasonable place for someone to get into the Mass Effect franchise if they've never played it before. 
I really need to replay the old ones. The fact that he doesn't take into account your ending. While I can see why people are a little bit upset, I can completely understand it from a development and storytelling standpoint. Yeah, I mean, my opinion is, I think that's absolutely fine. Yeah, me too. Me too. You know, Mass Effect ending is... Not well, that wasn't really much to talk about, was well, it? I'm just saying, like, I saw sort of your opinion as someone who's played way more of it than me. I mean, honestly, I never expected them to do it. Right. I, I never expected them to take it into account because... As you said, there's too many permutations that it would it would make the. I mean, the only way I think it would have made any sense. Right. Is let's say that they made the story like a hundred years in the future from the original Mass from Mass Effect Three, for example. Mm-hmm. Right, and it just took into account your basic ending, and then it would say like this is what happened. But some of the endings of Mass Effect, I'm not going to say what they are. It would be really weird if it took it into account. Yeah. So I'm not really surprised. I'm I'm actually okay with it. Yeah, and considering it's a new galaxy, like it's not even like a new area, it's a new galaxy. So it's actually not even that um unreasonable that these characters wouldn't know what was going on in Milky Way. Exactly. So I'm actually okay with it. I'm I'm like, you know what, QQ more. Yeah, so I'm 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 interested in Mass Effect Andromeda. I wanna see some actual gameplay please. That'll be nice. The fact that they haven't shown anything is really worrying, given that it's supposed to be out early next year. I'm feeling, I'm smelling another delay in the air, but we'll have to see. Yeah, apart from that, though, I'm all, I'm all okay with that. To be yeah, honest. yeah. All right. Speaking of all okay, <laughs> Mighty Number no. Nine. Yes. Yeah. The... How the Mighty Number no. Nine has fallen. Did it really fall though? Yes. Not really. It fell from a rickety stall that had three legs. No, it didn't. I mean, like, first of all, if you look at, like, the recept, like, go back to the internets. Go to the internets uh-huh. and start searching, like, the the forums, like, NeoGAFs and the uh, GameFAQs and all these different websites and forums, right? Uh, around the time of the Kickstarter and yeah. see how, basically, people were calling it, like, you know. The second coming. They they basically thought it was the Khan of Khans. They were they were quite literally like carrying it above their heads. It's like, you can, know. Can, can you tell we've been watching Marco Polo on Netflix? Yeah. <laughs> they they were carrying it above their heads and lauding it as the as you know the best thing ever. They were like, ha ha ha. Yeah, they, yeah, but a lot has happened since then. Yeah, exactly. But that's, that's kind of I my argue point. That it doesn't really it hasn't really fallen. <laughs> yeah, but that's my point. It yeah. had fallen compared to where it had oh, been. Oh, yeah. No, if, you, if you compare it to when it first came out on Kickstarter and got, was it, four million or something silly? Put it this way, I wouldn't mind it in my bank very far. It's fallen very far since then. However, since then, it has been delayed multiple times and several worrying things happened, such as, you know, stylistic changes. As I, said, the I wasn't a big the, fan the of the new style. The multiple delays and then... The worst, the worst offence in my mind... The most egregious, the most, if you yes, will. the most egregious offence, in my opinion, is the fact that before the game was even finished, they decided it would be real smart to start another Kickstarter for another game. You know what's really... Which, unsurprisingly, didn't get shit. You know what was quite harsh? No. Quite a few people who backed the game did not get their backers copy in time as well. And so the reviewers were getting it early, but the backers didn't. Wow. They can't do anything right. Well, they can cry internally. Oh, God. That's that terrible. is so weak. Yeah, so basically, um, it it came out, and by all reviews, it's mediocre. It's not terrible, it's just kind of meh. Yeah? Basically. And Kaija Inafune came out and said that the game we have is, and I quote, better than nothing. <laughs> You know what? Did you see the thing on Sonic? Sonic actually made a comment on that. It's better than nothing. <laughs> the official Twitter of Sonic. It was fucking great. And someone else was like... Uh... And someone else responded something along the lines of... Okay, Mr. 09. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. Uh, you know, they're just making Mr. Anifune, you know, cry like an anime fan on Prom Night. That's what I'm going to yeah, say. Yeah, like an animal fan like on an Prom Night. An animal fan on Prom Night. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and then what? What's great, right? Is um, you know, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, the other really successful Kickstarter. Please tell me that's not going down. No, 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 no. This, this is good. A lot because because my number nine came out and it was so shit, or so mediocre, should I say? Yeah. A lot of people. It's were like, better than nothing. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's like you know, if I give you a thimble while you're on fire, there you go. There's some water. It's better than nothing. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, so naturally a lot of people were really worried about Bloodstained because that's obviously another revival of a classic franchise yeah. kind of really successful Kickstarter. It got a few panels. Yeah. They decided to release... Well, there's a, there was a demo of Playable E3 and what they've done yeah. is given the people who donated more than $60, I think it was, to the Kickstarter, have been given that E3 demo, basically. I heard and about that. It's really generous. Uh, yeah, that's that's really cool that they've done that. And I think it's actually really smart because they probably realised that oh, you know, people are going to be wondering what we're doing. Even though like the the two Kickstarters are like night and day. While Mighty Number no. 9 has been nothing but trouble... Bloodstain just been really honest, really open. Here's what we're doing. Here's what we, you know. Here's what's being worked on. Blah 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 blah. So it came out, and I obviously haven't played it because I didn't actually back the Kickstarter. By the time, you know, I even looked at it, it already closed because it got like six million or something. Silly. Yeah, it got a few pennies, didn't yeah. it? So I kind of regret not backing it. But Me oh, well. too, to be honest. Yeah. I kept meaning I'll, I'll, to. I'll play it when it comes out. Don't get me wrong, but I kind of regret not backing it. Yeah, like an anime fan. Of <laughs> like an anime fan of Prom Night. I regret it. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so the, the, the demos came out and happily it's looking really, really promising. Um, like an so anime they... fan on Prom Night. <laughs> Let's make that joke as many times as we can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously I haven't played it, but from what I've seen on YouTube, because obviously there's all sorts of videos about it now, it looks really promising. It's obviously still got a ways to go because it's not finished. Like an anime fan on Prom Night. <laughs> 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 but from, from what I've seen, it looks really promising. It looks like classic Castlevania basically it is Symphony of the Night essentially yeah. and I, I'm down with that if it's just Symphony of the Night but obviously modernised a new character a new story I'm down I'm down for that yeah so yeah have no fear are you, are you down with an anime panel from Night yes okay. actually yeah. okay yeah. just check in mm. I can't believe they released that trailer and was like uh, this isn't going to upset is anyone this is fine it's not like you know the same sort of people who like video games also seem to like anime an awful lot. It's not that there's a huge crossover in the fan bases there or anything. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that'd be fine. It's basically, it's only alienate 50% of our <laughs> fans. It's okay. 50% even seems like a low number. I mean, I don't know what they were smoking in the office when they made that trailer, but they should not smoke that. Apparently again. they were smoking the Kickstarter money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were just smoking $100 bills. I oh, they were doing. Yeah. Well, maybe they were smoking the hopes and dreams of an anime fan on prom. <laughs> You're laughing. You're more of an anime fan than I am. Yeah, but I find their pain and suffering amusing that their game is really bad. Yeah, but it's better than nothing. Is it, though? Is it? Is it? Really? I can't... From what I've seen, not really. It's not better than Apparently nothing. Apparently, the, the reason that it fucked up is because he was trying to work on too many projects and he wasn't giving it his full attention. Yeah, which was shown by the fact that he tried to do another Kickstarter he tried. for another game. <laughs> While Mighty Number no. 9 was still being worked on. And it's just like, what was really funny is um, I did a video on the fact that Kaiji said it was better than nothing. Right? Yeah. So I decided to look at the comments like I sometimes do. Yeah. And, uh, That's dangerous actions like that. Well, yeah. But it was actually quite funny because a lot of the comments were like, oh, Capcom are just laughing and laughing right now. Because obviously they wouldn't let him. And it's like, maybe this was why. <laughs> yeah. Well. Like, Capcom yeah. didn't let him do Mega Man anymore, and it's just like, well, now they're laughing because, like, he was like, yeah, fuck you, Capcom, we'll do what you tell me. And now it's just like. <laughs> That's her laughing. Yeah, I'm just like, like laughing, just like, hee! <laughs> I think the sad thing is, if it. You know what's actually worse about this is it actually fucked over the chances. I don't know, I think they're actually re doing a remaster of the Mega Man's. They did release it, or are releasing, I'm not sure if it's out to be honest. I, like think, a, they're re a I think releasing is the key word. A Mega Man collection. I don't think they'll go back to Mega Man, to be honest, but I just find it funny, and the comments are like, yeah, I bet Capcom are laughing right now. And the other one was like, yeah, this is why Capcom didn't trust him, or something like that. And I'm like, well, as, as much as Capcom have fucked up massively a lot over the years, <laughs> maybe they were right on this one, maybe not, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe maybe if he had a publisher kind of tapping him on the shoulder going, hey, hey, Inafune, you might want to work on that thing that we gave you a lot of money on, he wouldn't have fucked up so bad. But Only if he can't work with that publisher tapping on the shoulders, then... Yeah, I was going to say, that's not really a good, that's sign. Not a good sign. Plenty of Kickstarters have come out and been good. And a lot of people are now worried about the future of Kickstarter. I'm like, don't, don't worry, because look, Mighty Number no. 9 is a huge failure, yes. But there have been a lot of huge successes, like Wasteland 2, 
Pillars of Eternity. Let's not forget Undertale was on Kickstarter as well. And uh, to be fair, most I'm not sure it was on and also most of the companies have behaved really well afterwards. Yeah. I mean, look at Oculus. Well, let's not go there. But there are there are more success stories from Kickstarters than there are high profile failures. Isn't yeah, and to be honest, the way I look at it is you should well, not. That is until Shenmue Three comes out, and it's disappointing. Then maybe we can revisit. I actually think I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be a disappointment. I don't know. I just feel like the expectation is too high. I really do. You know, the one I think is going to be really interesting is Final Fantasy VII. That's not Kickstarter, though. I didn't say it was. I'm just saying that expectation. Oh, right. Because I, I think people have this expectation of... Well, see, with Final Fantasy VII, I feel like people have unreasonable expectations because some of the people are going to not want them to touch anything or change anything, which is not going to happen. Because if Square Enix have rightfully said, if you want to play Final Fantasy VII, that game already exists. They're not just going to remake it again. What's, what's the point? That game is already there for you to play if you want to play it. I think that's fair. It's there. You, the new one doesn't stop it from existing. If you want the old game, go play it, basically. They're going to change stuff. And that every little change is going to upset people. But it's like, this is, you've been asking for a remaster for years. And they'll I wonder, it to you. you know, apart from the obvious ones like Air is if there... Uh-huh. I do wonder if they're going to change. You know, Did you ever play Final Fantasy VII? I played a decent amount, but I never finished it. Where no. did you get up to? Oh, God, that's a good question. Uh, just after the big flashback with Sephiroth and... Okay, so Cloud. you'll know what I'm talking about. You know where Cloud has to dress up as a woman? They've already said they're not getting rid of that. Oh, really? Yeah. They have publicly said they won't remove that scene. So a lot of people were worried about that as well, that it would lose that kind of sense of humour about it, and that, that scene in particular. Yeah, but I was they curious have, they how have, they were going to handle they that. They have said they won't change that. They've already said I know there's going to be bitching about that. So I don't think they care. They're literally going to print money with this release. I know, as much that. as people are complaining about the changes they've already said, this, this is going to print money for Square Enix. I don't think they're worried. No, not really. And... I think people would prefer they didn't remove it because a lot of people were worried they would and they've said no 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 don't worry it will not lose that scene it won't lose its comedic elements so like an enemy fan on Prom Night yeah exactly so I'm looking forward to Final Fantasy 7 I was actually a little bit disappointed we didn't see more of it at E3 but I'm not really surprised I think they I didn't expect it to release this year because Final Fantasy 15 is out this year but still no and I'm kind of interested in Final Fantasy 15 well the demo was promising it needed work obviously but the demo was good so if the demo is like the full game, I'm down. I mean, the frame rate was also really good as well. <laughs> That's the main thing that needed work, to be honest, is the frame rate was all Well, I actually think it was intentional. What they were doing is they were making each frame last longer on screen so you could appreciate every step <laughs> longer. <laughs> huh? uh, this is why I wish it was coming out on PC, because then... You know, I think it will. I hope so. All they, the others have. They haven't set... Yeah, but years <laughs> later, we only just got... Like, 13.3 for example I think it will come out I do too I just hope it's not like literally years after it's come out but we'll yeah. see right, um, is there anything you want to discuss before we wrap things up Um, I'm pretty good yeah I mean post E3 we've had a few things come out I believe but I mean I, I think there's one thing we should say which is what how close we are to 30,000 subs now. Yes, that's a good point, actually. Let's, let's finish with that. We are fast approaching 30,000 subs. In fact, by the time this video goes up, we might already be there. Or very close or to very it. Or very close to it, you know. Unfortunately, my, my crystal ball is misplaced, as always. Welcome to the Crystal Maze! <laughs> oh, that show. So good. Da, 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 da. Oh, speaking of classic shows, Red Wars is coming back. I uh, just saw the new robots, the redesigns of the house robots, and they look really Meh, Crystal Maze. Robot Wars. Can't wait. If you are, if you guys are from America and you still and you haven't seen it, you should honestly check out a couple of episodes. They're on YouTube, so that's completely legal to watch. Honest. And um, get ready for some terrible hair. That's all I'm gonna say. There yeah, because we're talking early eight, late, early a, early nineties, early late eighties. Yeah, this is like late eighties, early nineties. So you've got the big hair. From the women, and then the just the really awful hair and the beard, mustaches from the men. Yeah, like the 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 seventies oh, porno stash. Yeah, that's some terrible hair on that show. But anyway, um, it's kind of weird that we're almost at thirty k. That is 
Yeah, it is odd, I'm not going to lie, because it doesn't feel like that long ago that we reached 25,000. More specifically, it doesn't feel like... Because it's really weirding to me, uh, weird, weird to me. There we go. Let's do, let's do some Englishes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's weird to me that there's like thirty thousand people who have subscribed, and it's still weird to me getting emails from people asking my opinion on stuff. It is a little bit strange, and to be honest, it'll probably always be strange if you know, no matter how big or small yeah. you remain. Because I try not to say fans. I guess viewers more. Yeah, because I don't I don't like the term fan to be honest. It's not. Not for any reason other than it just, I don't know, it just feels weird to me to say that, like really weird. And I don't mean it in kind of like, eh, no, I'm threatened, but like, it's just... It's just a, it's just a, it is a strange feeling, I know what you mean, it is a strange yeah. feeling. Yeah. So, um, thank you in advance for 30k, I'll, I'll put up an official thing on Facebook and Twitter when we officially reach it. But, you know, thank you in advance, I guess. Yeah. Your support really does mean a lot. Exactly. So if you send us hookers and blackjack, that would be pretty sweet. <laughs> I don't know how they're gonna send us hookers. Mm. They, they're just gonna send us a voucher good for one hooker or what? Mm. I'm not really <laughs> for of it to be honest. It's you not don't like, think these things through. Well, it's not like I was like, hey, I'm gonna research on the internet for a mail order hooker and then. <laughs> I bet that exists. Do you know who has researched that though? No. An anime fan on Fortnite. For God's sake. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. I shall leave you <laughs> to enjoy the rest of your day and your week, and we'll see you next time. Yes. Bye bye. Yeah. But, yeah, pretty much. <laughs>